Hello, welcome back to the SML Podcast, playing the field with Field General 007. Got another exciting show for you, not your typical format. We're going to do something a little bit different a little bit later on. But first, we're going to cover the main reason why you're here, to hear my take on what's going on in the SML today. The information is off Daddy League, so take it with a grain of salt. If I took it from Madden, take that with a grain of salt, because who knows what would happen if we advanced to the playoffs today. But we're taking a look at the standings. We're talking about what's going on in our league. Right now, if the playoffs ended today in the AFC South or the AFC Conference, the Texans would be your number one seed. Think about that. The Browns, your number two seed. So that's the South, the North. The Bills would be your three seed. That's the East. The Chargers would be your West seed. And then your two wild cards would be the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, keep in mind, the Bengals are... are According to Daddy League's Jaguars are seven and one, the Texans are eight and one. So who would actually get the number one seed? And it may be the Jaguars on Madden, I don't know. But right now, what's interesting is the Colts primetime zero 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 would not be in the playoffs. He's on the bubble at four and four. Wow, think about that. You haven't been hearing a whole lot from Prime. He's just kinda of going under the radar. He's got his new girlfriend and he's not really putting all the time in the league and I think Maybe that could be the reason why his play has stuttered. Or maybe it's just because this new Madden and the Colts are trash. And ratings have a larger impact now than what they did before. The NFC, the Vikings would be the number one seed. The Saints, or the Vikings 7-2. and two. The Saints 6-2 and two would be number two. They've got me at number three at 6-4, and four, but the Seahawks just beat me. So I would put them at the three seed and me in the, uh, the wild card. Uh... But anyway, it's got me at number three. It's got the Giants at six and three. It's got the Bears and Redskins as the wild card teams. I would beat out the Redskins for that uh, wild card spot as the standings sit now, and the Seahawks would take my spot. So it's kind of interesting what's playing out. And if you look on the bubble, you know you've got teams like the Falcons, Lawyer Killer. You got a guy, uh, the Eagles. You know they're sitting there at five and four, pretty respectable, terrible two step. So we're at four and five right now. A lot of guys right there on the cusp. And according to the power rankings, which I know guys really like to hear this stuff, but uh, Daddy Leagues has got the Texans at number one. I fell all the way down to the ninth spot today. That's very disheartening. Uh, the Vikings are number two. The Jaguars are number three. The Cleveland Browns are number four at eight and two. Okay, let's talk about stats. We all like stats. Baker Mayfield is your number one passer. He's got 2,197 yards and 14 touchdown passes. This next standing, I am very proud of. I currently lead the league in rushing. Me, baby. Me. 725 yards and five touchdowns. You guys can suck an egg. I am the worst rusher in Madden history, and I'm running all over. So, suck on it. Anyway, receiving, and but... Let's keep that in mind. Saquon Barkley, 697 yards. Giovanni Bernard, 680. Those guys are about ready to take it from me, but right now I'm number one. Okay, receiving. Brandon Cooks, 38 catches, 911 yards, six touchdowns. He's your number one receiver. Tyreek Hill, 33 catches, 792, six touchdowns. And there's a lot of big play receiving going on this year. Interceptions thrown. Okay. Uh, the Jets, Sam Darnold, Bo Maddie's quarterback, 23 interceptions. He's your worst quarterback for interceptions so far. Jimmy Garoppolo with 20, Patrick Mahomes with 17, Josh Allen with 16, and Aaron Rodgers with a discount double check. He's got 15 interceptions. I don't know how I'm not on the list yet. Uh, very interesting, and I guess now it's time for my call out. I'm calling some teams out that just aren't really performing. Uh, NFC, Lawyer Killer, what is going on? You know, you won a Super Bowl. You're four and five right now. Dem 49ers at six and two is owning that division right now. The NFC South is in disarray. The NFC North, arguably one of the most competitive divisions in the SML right now. It's got the Vikings at seven and two, the Bears at six and two, and even the Lions at four and four are still, you know, in the race at this point. The NFC West, we got the Seahawks at six and three, the Rams at six and four. Um, but like I said, we're calling out teams. So the Falcons, you got to step it up, man. I need something more from you. This, I, I, I don't have an answer for it. I haven't really seen any of the streams. I don't know what's going on. All right, if you need help, DM me. I'm the number one rusher in the league right now. The Colts obviously have to be called out. 
at four and four. I mean, he's still technically, you know, the SML champion until this season's over. I know he could reel off and, you know, win eight games in a row here and finish 12-4 and four and go take the Super Bowl. But the Colts are probably one of the most underperforming teams in all of the SML. I would also uh, like to call out John. 3-6 and six with the Ravens right now. The Browns are 8-2, and two, and they got the number one passer in the league. And John, you're only, you're letting you got a chance to win this division, man. I know it's probably one of the toughest divisions to be in. You got slow motion, you got you know just some really good players over there in the AFC North. But John, you got to give me something. What are we doing? What are we doing? All right, I'm gonna get off the rant box. I've got a new segment, and I'm very excited that this may be a one time for the one time because I'm only doing a show once a week. Uh, before I was gonna do a game recap. You know, every time I played a game, I put a podcast out. But right now, I've pretty much only promised one podcast a week. So from the games that I have played, I will be doing a rundown of the last three games I played. There's some really good moments and then some not-so-good moments. But we're going to bring it to you here on Playing the Field with Field General 007. All right, up for some Week 8 action. Here we got G-World, a CFM veteran. Uh, right here, I managed to get it down the goal line, and we're running some halfback wham action. That's Todd Gurley in the end zone, and we were trying to find a new identity this year with running the football. I have Todd Gurley. I want to get it done. Can I run the ball? I was struggling up to this point, and here we go. Another goal line situation. Todd Gurley again. That's another Rams touchdown, and it seems like maybe I'm starting to find my footing, if you will, with this running game. And uh, you know, here we got the extra point. Looking good. Oh, apparently we went ahead and skipped it. We're skipping ahead to the Packers' first points of the game in the third quarter. Uh, it's 14-3 at this point. You're feeling pretty good. you got to be feeling pretty good about yourself. Here we're handing the ball off. Another goal line situation late in the fourth quarter. Todd Gurley, the hat trick. Three rushing touchdowns. I don't think I had really anything for yards, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, here uh, we're skipping ahead. I won 21-3 in that game. This game is against Dem 49ers, my arch nemesis. I remember Yoke and Perriman running all over my defense as he was the Ravens. This is usually the Saints. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Todd Gurley. Oh, he broke his ankles. And here goes Todd Gurley. Gurley's running. He's at the 30. 25-20. 15-10. 5. Touchdown. Todd Gurley and the Rams. This is starting to become a thing now with Todd Gurley finding the end zone. But uh, anyway, we take the early lead. And now we're skipping ahead to the Saints, who managed to, you know, march all the way in down to my two-yard line. And here comes Drew Breezy throwing a good one there. Saints on the board, seven to seven. Well, I guess seven to six right now. And uh, you know, you got to give the kid credit. Dem 49ers is a prolific offensive player, and it's blocked. Yeah, we only show you those plays if there's an uh-oh or a boo-boo. And that time it was a boo-boo and an uh-oh. So here we go. I'm driving again. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Setting up some play action. Probably going to hit. Uh, I should have thrown it to R1. But I waited like way too long. I was waiting for something bigger down the field. I should have dumped it off or at that point not thrown it. But it's like, eh. That one, I, that was a terrible pass. Anyway, Saints. Missed the extra point. Now he's kicking a field goal. He's going up 9-7. to seven. Dem 49ers with a lead now with two minutes, or not two minutes, in the second quarter. We're late in the second quarter now, uh, about a minute to go, and this is a long field goal. Lag was a factor, and I didn't quite hit it full power, but we still made it. 10-9 now. So we take the lead on my arch nemesis, Dem 49ers. And what's interesting about this sequence, Vince, I was driving it, and I decided to run some clock, and I ran the fake. Uh-oh, that's a was not picked. He's just too fat, too slow to get a good play, but it was interesting. I wasted way too much time. Had I got that completion and stepped out of bounds or maybe not ran, because I ran like 20 or 30 seconds. Regardless, here we go. Second half action now, and Drew Brees was hurt in this game. Here comes uh, the inevitable interception there to Mark Barron, Teddy Bridgewater. Not good. Uh, at this point, I'm turning into kind of a shit show for the Saints, but uh, here come the Rams. Setting up a slant route. I know it's a quick hitter. It's probably going to be some pressure. The dig route's a little bit too long. The forming route is going to do a quick banger. Um, had I waited, uh, square probably would have been open. But I saw an opening. I took it with uh, Jared Goff. 
on the run. And now we're up 17-9. Here comes Teddy Bridgewater after a fourth down conversion earlier in this drive. There's an interception there. And, the game, you know, the, the sky is falling on the Saints in this game at this point. We're up 17-9. Here we're in field goal range again. And Legatron knocks it through. We're up 20-9. And it feels like it's game over. You would think it would be game over. But here come the Saints tacking on field goal of their own with just under two minutes or now there's just under a minute remaining we've got third and long and this is the situation is he's got no timeouts we got 43 seconds third and 12 i decided i'm gonna go ahead and try to run this thing because if i can take anything now at this point i'm good as long as i don't fumble or step out of bounds i can run the clock game over that's what happened skip ahead to the night i played or i guess monday night i played the seahawks um it's doing pretty good then the drive bogged down, kicked a field goal. We held him on downs uh, the first drive. He went for it, did not get it. We answered with the field goal. Here, uh, this is why you don't call man blitz. You're going to get exposed every freaking time. And there it goes. There it goes. Where are we? And a little juke into the end zone. Anyway, that's why you don't call man blitz. I'm not a huge man blitz guy that you got to be calculated with. It. There I thought it was, and he's... Really running it well. I did find a way to contain the run, um, but I kind of played poorly in this game. He played really good uh, pass coverage, forced me to run it, and I stayed with the run. But unfortunately, as you're going to see in this game, it didn't really matter. Uh, Seahawks go up 13-3 to at this point. I answered the field goal here. Uh, we're down 13-6. to We're late here in the third quarter already. And right here, we'll let him narrate. He's going to go for that fucking slant. I just know it. Where is fucking God. I did not go for the slant. I'll have you know it was a corner route. But anyway, we managed to go ahead and get the touchdown there. We're up, or tied, I guess, 13 to 3. And here comes some play action against some cover four, I believe. Really deep play. It took forever. Wilson had all day long to throw. Lock it, and then puts on a juke instantly after he catches it. Another juke. And I think another juke. Who knows what's going on? Lock it. In the end zone, Seahawks. And that was pretty much the game. Um, I will drive it. I will go on a nice drive here. And this, though, I'm, I'm forcing way too much to happen. I don't agree with um, the way that Madden lets them deep balls drop for the linebackers to get too often. I feel like, I don't know, maybe it was just a bad throw from the quarterback. And that was a bad decision, really. I should have either checked down, tried to take off on the run, or thrown it away. But that was the game. Uh, you know, he definitely played good defense. Um... He has kind of a frustrating offense. By the time I figured it out, he had already, you know, spotted a decent amount of plays on me at that point. And, uh, yeah, it just, it was tough. It was a tough game. It was a tough pill to swallow. And, thankfully, you know, there's still other games left in the season. It's going to be interesting to see where those playoff spots actually shake out. Um, but, anyway, I feel like I've rambled on a little bit too long in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the highlight montage. Let me know in the comment section below or on GroupMe if you happen to find this podcast and you haven't found a CFM home yet. Let the SML be that home for you. If you're part of our league, be sure to check out League Crawler. Uh, rate our league. Comment on the post. It just helps to bring more awareness to the league. If you're using your Twitter, make sure you're sending out one tweet per advance. That's much appreciated and required for part of the league. Make sure you're archiving your games, that you have it set on the longest setting. I think it only archives for 14 weeks unless you're a premium player. But you can't just delete the stream as soon as you're done. I mean, it needs to be up there just in case there's something that's disputed. Unfortunately, it does happen, although we, you know, we do our best not to have that to happen. It does happen from time to time. I do appreciate you guys staying tuned for this long. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the group chat, I've got some changes coming. If you saw my vlog, uh, we've got a big, some kind of big announcements coming. I'm bringing a new, new flair to it. I'm doing something different with my content. It's going to be elevated tremendously, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Uh, it should be rolling out in the next week or two. It's something that's going to be coming pretty soon. Uh, stay tuned, and you'll know when you see it, and I think it's really going to be something fun. But uh, be sure to apply under league, at Daddy Leagues. Uh, check us out. This is Sam Madden League. This is Playing the Field. Field General 007, signing off.